name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God our Father, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. In today's Mass, I'd like to pray for all of you and pray for all those who have asked prayers at this time. Pray especially for those who are sick. I pray that God may be with them, that God may strengthen them, and that God may heal. Pray for those who, who are battling coronavirus at this time, or those whose family members are struggling with this disease. We pray for the healing graces of God to be released in full measure to bring them total and complete recovery. Pray for our doctors and nurses who continue to be stretched because of the spread of this virus, that God may help them, that God may be with them, that God may protect them in their service and in their ministries. We pray for those who have died. We pray for those whose families are left in grief that God may bring comfort and strength and grace. And I'll invite you to bring your own intentions and let us pray together. And not forgetting to pray for those who have birthdays or other anniversaries. Pray for God to be with you and God for to grant you many more healthy and joyful years in the future. You were sent to heal the contrary. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. You came to call sinners to repentance. Christ have mercy. Christ have mercy. You plead for us at the right hand of the Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins and bring us to life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who in the abasement of your Son have raised up a fallen world, fill, with faith, fill your faithful with holy joy. For on those you have rescued from the slavery to sin, you bestow eternal gladness through Christ our Lord. Amen. Our first reading is from the prophet Hosea. Thus says the Lord, Return, O Israel, to the Lord your God. You have collapsed through your guilt. Take your words and return to the Lord. Say to him, Forgive all iniquity and receive what is good, that we may render as offerings the bullocks from our stalls. Assyria will not save us, nor shall, our, nor shall we have horses to mount. We shall say no more our God to the work of our hands, for in you the orphan finds compassion. I will heal their defection, says the Lord. I will love them freely, for my wrath is turned away from them. I'll be like the dew for Israel. He shall blossom like the lily. He shall strike root like the Lebanon cedar and put forth his shoots. His splendor shall be like the olive tree and his fragrance like the Lebanon cedar. Again, they shall dwell in his shade and raise grain. They shall blossom like the vine, and his fame shall be like the wine of Lebanon. Ephraim, what more has he to do with idols? I have humbled him, but I will prosper him. I am like a pendant cypress tree. Because of me, you shall bear fruit. Let him who is wise understand these things. Let him who is prudent know them. Straight are the paths of the Lord. In them the just walk, but sinners stumble. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. My mouth shall declare your praise. My mouth shall declare your praise. Have mercy on me, God, in your kindness. In your greatness, in the greatness of your compassion, wipe out my offense. Thoroughly wash me from my guilt, and of my sin cleanse me. My mouth shall declare your praise. Behold, you are pleased with sincerity of heart, and in my inmost being you teach me wisdom. Cleanse me of sin with high soap, 
that I may, I may be purified. Wash me, and I shall be whiter than snow. My mouth will declare your praise. A clean heart create for me, O God, and a steadfast spirit renew within me. Cast me not out from your presence, and your, your Holy Spirit take not from me. My mouth shall declare your praise. Give me back the joy of your salvation, and a willing spirit sustaining me. O Lord, open my lips, and my mouth shall declare your praise. My mouth will declare your praise. Alleluia, 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 alleluia. When the spirit of truth comes, he will guide you to all truth, to remind you of all that I told you. Alleluia, alleluia. My sisters and brothers, the Lord be with you and with your spirit. Reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord. Jesus said to his apostles, Behold, I am sending you like sheep in the midst of wolves. So be shrewd as serpents and simple as doves. But beware of men, for they will hand you over to courts and scourge you in their synagogues. And you will be led before governors and kings for my sake, as a witness before them and the Persians. When they hand you over, do not worry about how you are to speak or what you are to say. You will be given at that moment what you are to say. For it will not be you who speak, but the Spirit of my Father speaking through you. Brother will hand over brother to death, and, and the father his child. Children will rise up against parents and have them put to death. You will be hated by all because of my name, but whoever endures to the end will be saved. When they persecute you in one town, flee to another. Amen, I say to you, you will not finish the towns of Israel before the Son of Man comes. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. My dear friends, I hope today or this week was a better week for you. I hope that the future is encouraging and maybe comforting or at least not as fearful as it was, but if it is, we're capable of facing it no less. And so today I'd like us to just focus very briefly on the gospel reading. The Lord Jesus said to his apostles, Behold, I am sending you like sheep in the midst of wolves. Now come to think of it, who does that? Who will send his sheep knowing that he is sending helpless, harmless, vulnerable sheep in the midst of wolves? Because it's almost like sending your sheep to go die. You know very well what will happen to them in the midst of wolves. So Jesus makes that comparison that is so very awkward and so very weird. It's scary to think about the fact that he knew this, and yet he was still sending his disciples. He says, Behold, I am sending you like sheep in the midst of wolves. So be shrewd as serpents and simple as doves. So Jesus sends his disciples into danger. Why was he doing that? Was it to prove his glory, to prove his power? To prove he can do all things? Maybe not, because Jesus wasn't about showing his authority or his power. But I think he realizes that we constantly live amidst wolves. We are constantly living among wolves. Now, that's something that I, a concept that I'm sure almost everyone 
is aware of. The phrase wolves in sheep clothing. That's something that I'm sure everyone can relate to. Because everyone has had someone, somehow, somewhere, who was like a wolf, but in sheep clothing. Meaning someone whose colors were not immediately visible. They pretended to be something they were not. And only time allowed us to recognize who they truly are or who they truly were. I've seen relationships, most relationships have ended because when the two people met, they, were, they, they, they both thought they were, they would be good together. And suddenly you begin to realize when the other person begins to show you who they truly are, most relationships have ended as a result of that. Friendships have also ended. Even families have broken as a result of that realization that this person isn't who I thought they were or who I imagined they were. So believe it or not, it's, 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 a, sad, it's a sad thing. But the truth of the matter is that we are constantly living among people who are frail, people who are, cannot be trusted, people who can change, people who can do things that spring surprises constantly. And so Jesus is not saying we should run away from them. He's not saying we should avoid them. Because we, even if we wanted to, we cannot. We live in this, we share this world with them. So he says, but there's something we can do. Be as wise as serpents, or, or as sheep. That means don't, um, don't take things for granted. Don't just act as though, yeah, God is going to protect me. God is going to be with me. Yeah, God will be with you. But there's something you must do. It says be wise. That means open your eyes. That means read the signs. That means ask questions. That means inter interrogate people. That means don't just take people's words to mean everything. There are too many of us who just take a lot of things for granted. You meet someone, yeah, that's okay to meet them. But you can't just meet someone and trust them until they have shown you that they are trustworthy. People should learn to earn your trust. You don't just meet someone today and you want, you want to die for them, you want to give them your, your whole life and you want to give them everything. Now, when we live like that, then we are not living the way Jesus said we should. Because first he says, be wise as serpent and as simple as doves. Don't be complicated. Yeah, be transparent. But be wise. Focus. Listen. If, if someone... Now, this, this is how I behave. Right? When I meet somebody, I focus on you. I listen to you. I watch you. I hear you. I want to hear how you talk about people. Because how you talk about people will tell me what is in your heart. So when you may talk so differently about me, but I just want to hear how you speak about other things, how you speak about other people, because that tells me how you will speak about me when I'm the other person. That, that's how I learn to, to understand people. And, and how I hear you treat other people gives me an idea what goes on in your own soul and in your own spirit and, and what character you are built of. So it's important. Jesus says, be wise. That's what he means. Yeah, if someone praises you and, praises and says all the good things about you and then you hear them say some ugly things about someone, especially undeservedly, yeah, put a question mark. Don't avoid them, but just put a question mark. So that's how. And it doesn't matter who that one is. That one could be your husband, could be your, your wife, could be your brother, your sister. But it's important to recognize what people are capable of. Now, if one is capable of betraying A, they may be capable of also betraying B. It doesn't matter if B is you or someone else. So those things would make us be more aware of what is possible, just so we don't trust people for them to take advantage of us and, in some cases, undermine us. So Jesus says, yeah, we live constantly 
among people who would be wolves in sheep clothing. Be wise, but also be simple. It says, they will hand you over. They will hand you over to courts. I will scourge you. That means persecution is almost always awaiting you. Now, persecution doesn't necessarily mean that you might, you might be killed, but it might also mean that you could be undermined. You could be taken advantage of. You could be exploited. Your name could be destroyed. Your character could be damaged. Someone could falsely say lies about you. All of those things could happen to you. Someone might even deny you what you deserve. So, so what Jesus says, we should expect all of that to happen. But we must remain resolute. We must keep pressing and keep pushing through all the limits. Now, the sad part of this is that some of those who might undermine us, some of the, 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 the wolves in our lives could be brothers. That means siblings or family members, could be parents, could be their cousins, uncles, could be anything. After all, statistics tell us that abuses, sexual, especially sexual abuses of minors happen mostly in families. It is an uncle or a grandpa or a brother, a big brother, or even a parent who does that to their own child. And so sometimes, even in our own families, which is very, very sad, in your own close knit, you know, family circle, you might have sheep, you might have wolves looking like sheep. It's still the same. Be vigilant. Be open your eyes. If you if you just got married and now have your children have a stepdad or a stepmom. Yeah, watch and see. They may love you, but you're not sure either will protect your children from you. These are all the things that happen. You know, we've seen how, you know, stepdads or stepmoms have killed their stepchildren. These are all dangerous things that we see every day. So Jesus is constantly advising us. He says, be wise. Don't be silly. Don't be stupid. Just because someone sent you a text message and told you how much they love you. Yeah, that love may have a different meaning for, for them than they have for you. So it's important for us to be wise. Open your eyes. Ask questions. Verify information. Don't just take what somebody says to mean what you imagine. So we pray, dear friends, that as we go through, Jesus is not taking us away from this world. We placed here for a reason. To show that we can handle it. May God give us the wisdom. May God open our eyes. May God give us the courage to face this world and to make the most of it. So always I'd like to remind you that you are the delight of the Almighty God and that God loves you very much. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Let us pray. Our response will be, Lord, hear our prayer. For the church universal, that it may reject worldly wealth and power to embrace the shepherd-like life of Christ, we pray to the Lord, Lord, hear our prayer. For those in authority, that they, might, they may demonstrate solidarity with their people, we pray to the Lord, Lord, hear our prayer. For all who presume that their will and desires are the same as the goal, that they may be humbled and shown their, the error of their ways, we pray to the Lord, Lord, hear our prayer. For those suffering from the ugliness of petty politics and poor relationships, whether in government, in workplace, in the church, or in the family, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those in other communities who are restless, who are sick, who feel alone, who have lost their jobs, who are losing their, their homes, whose businesses are going south, that God may help them find peace and comfort and strength and courage. We pray to the Lord, Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have asked our prayers, especially those who are sick, pray for those who have been diagnosed with coronavirus, that God may grant them courage and the will to fight, 
that God may help them know his love and his mercy and his healing. We pray to the Lord, Lord, hear our prayer. Most merciful God, hear the concerns we have brought before you. Please accept and grant them through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed I Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this bread to offer which earth has given and human hands have made it to become a bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed I Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this wine to offer, fruits of the vine and work of human hands become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray, my beloved sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours be acceptable to God, Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at my hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of his holy church. Amen. May this oblation dedicated to your name purify us, O Lord, and day by day bring our conduct closer to the life of Christ, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just. Our duty and our salvation, all the saints everywhere to give you thanks. Father most holy, through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ. His death we celebrate with love. His resurrection we confess with living faith. And his coming in glory we await with unwavering hope. And so with angels and saints we praise you as without end we are claimed. Holy, holy, holy Lord. God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, this gift, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like a dew fall, that they may become for us the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, the Lord Jesus took bread. Giving thanks, he broke it gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, the Lord took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is a chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, it will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. With the first acclamation, let us proclaim the mystery of our faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and his resurrection, we offer you all the bread of life, and this chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world. Bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope and Timothy our Bishop and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have placed you throughout the ages, we may merit to the co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Let us pray in the words our Lord gave us. 
our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, we said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord Jesus be with you always, and with your spirit. My dear friends, from me to all of you, may God's peace rest and abide now and always. Amen. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace this day. Look up, my sisters and brothers, and behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. At this moment, we ask the grace for spiritual communion for all those who are still unable to attend and to receive to receive communion. Most merciful God, today we lift up all your sons and daughters who, because of this coronavirus, are unable to attend us and to receive the Eucharist. We desire you, we need you, we are asking for you. We beg, O oh God, that at this moment of grace, you may bring them the spiritual benefits of this sacrament, that you may grant them every good favor that they desire and seek. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray. Grant, we pray, O Lord, that having been replenished by such great gifts, we may gain the price of salvation and never cease to praise you through Christ our Lord. Amen. Prayer to St. Michael the Archangel. St. Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and sinners of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits that prowl throughout the world, seeking the ruins of souls. Amen. Before the final blessing, I'd like to take a moment to express my thanks to all of you for joining us at this Mass. Pray that God may watch over you, that God may protect you, that God may bless you, that God may keep you safe amidst the wolves that you are exposed to every day. So always, if you forget anything I said, don't forget this, that you are still the delight of Almighty God. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Almighty God bless and keep you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Dear friends, this Mass is ended. We go forth in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Have an amazing week.